Hello, I want to talk to you a little bit about yeast overgrowth inside of the bowels. Um, it seems to be a popular topic nowadays, so I want to talk to you a little bit about it. First of all, my name is Dr. Philip Oob. I'm a family practice doctor here in Austin, Texas, and I focus on functional medicine, which is kind of digging down to the root cause of medical issues and medical problems and symptoms, and putting together a treatment plan to get back to wellness. So we're going to talk a little bit about yeast overgrowth. <clears throat> we're mainly talking about yeast buildup in the bowels. You can have yeast yeast infections and yeast overgrowth in all kinds of places. Yeast or fungus love growing in moist, warm areas, and the human body is a perfect um, storage facility for that. So it's important to know that everyone has a yeast in their bowels. It's a normal part of life. Everyone has it. I think a lot of practitioners can go overboard and start over eradicating and over treating for yeast. You know, ever since the invention of antibiotics, we've been on this like eradicate and kill modality as physicians. And it's important to realize that everything actually just needs to be in balance. We don't need to eradicate uh, much of anything. Now, there are certain infections, of course, that definitely need to be eradicated. But as far as your bowels are concerned, there's supposed to be a healthy amount of yeast and fungus in there, but not necessarily too much. So let's talk about a few things about yeast. First of all, yeast loves sugar, period, end of story. Now, if you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know that sugar is carbs, carbs is sugar. It's all sugar to your body. It doesn't matter. So you might think you're not eating much sugar, but if you really plot out your food journal and, and do like a calorie counter or a calorie tracker, you might realize that you're eating 70 to 80% carbs and your yeast is loving it. So first of all, if you want to start to reduce the yeast problem that you've got going on in your bowels, the number one thing is to start drastically reducing your carbs and increasing your fat. Yeast can't really survive off of uh, fat. They definitely survive off of sugar. To prove that point, I'll tell you that diabetics get more yeast infections than anyone else. Well, why do you think that is? Because they've got a ton of sugar coming out in their urine, and the urine is close to the vagina, and that's how you get a yeast infection. Moreover, there's a new drug called Jardiance, um, and there's several other ones. That drug causes you to urinate excess sugar if you're diabetic, and you can get yeast urinary tract infections. So that proves the point that yeast loves sugar and not so much fat. So if you want to decrease the yeast in your bowels, start cutting the sugar, start cutting the carbs. Number two, my favorite thing to do is actually use berberine and other uh, supplements that can decrease the yeast population. So um, there are certain herbs and, and uh, supplements that help kill off yeast, but once again, we're not trying to eradicate, we're just trying to reduce the population of the yeast. But you will not be able to reduce the population of the yeast if you're not adequately eating the right amount of fat and dropping your carbs. Um, it's kind of like adding gasoline to a fire while you're pouring water on it. Like gasoline's pretty flammable, it's still gonna ignite. So you wanna drop your carbs and you can add supplements like berberine um, to help kill off some of the yeast. One of my favorite products is from Metagenics, it's called Candy Bactin BR, and you can take one of those tablets twice a day in order to start reducing yeast populations. Now that product also kills off some bad bacteria, so you might get what's called a Herxheimer reaction where you actually feel a little worse in the beginning if you're killing off too much stuff at once. So work with a functional medicine practitioner, if not myself, um, to find out the right protocol for you. Number three reason to, or number three way to reduce yeast populations is actually stress. So they've proven that if you have an acute stressor or something happens dramatically, traumatically, whatever, your cortisol levels rise, your adrenal glands make cortisol, your cortisol levels rise, and what happens when your cortisol levels rise is your immune system actually dampens for a little bit, and that cortisol rise actually stimulates the yeast, um, the, the fungus, to spawn into a budding phase. Their budding phase is their growth phase. Um, yeast typically looks like spaghetti all meshed together, but whenever they start growing, they start sprouting new buds and these buds turn into new organisms, new fungi, and so not only can they multiply, but they also become somewhat invasive or more aggressive in their budding phase. So during stress, your cortisol levels rise, those yeasts start to multiply. So not only is the yeast multiplying, but your immune system is going down and then it starts to trigger the immune system inside your bowels because the immune system in your bowels has to regulate that yeast. The yeast are trying to get inside and we're trying to keep them out. Um, and so that's how you can start to get bowel dysfunction, weight gain, um, fatigue, yeast overgrowth, and immune activation in your bowels can cause a myriad of symptoms. 
I'd say the most common one that I see is, is bloating and, and difficulty with weight loss. So many people who struggle losing weight, a lot of times it's from yeast overgrowth. Now, like I said earlier, I'm not a big practitioner on using a ton of Diflucan or Nystatin, which are the prescription yeast killers, um, because I haven't found them particularly beneficial. People might feel better for a few days, but if you're not addressing the underlying problem, then you can't really um, kill off the yeast. So. The other way to fight off yeast is to actually use bacterial warfare. So as you're killing off the yeast, it's important to regrow something else. Your bowels have a certain amount of real estate, and so if a lot of that real estate is being taken up by yeast and you eradicate that yeast, then you want to make sure you're moving someone else into that real estate that you like and, and can create a beneficial um, opportunity for you. So you must be feeding the good bacteria while you eradicate the yeast. So that's taking an excellent probiotic and a prebiotic, not enough Americans eat enough fiber, you want to aim for 50 grams a day. That's actually pretty difficult, but that's the goal is to aim for 50 grams of fiber per day. If you're feeding those good bacteria in your bowels, then those good bacteria can actually fight off the yeast for you. The problem with yeast is that they form biofilms with bad bacteria. So um, let's talk a little bit about biofilms because I could talk for an hour about that. Basically, a biofilm is similar to plaque in your teeth. So you can brush and floss your teeth every day, but you still need to go to the dentist to scrape off some of that plaque that builds up. Why is that? Why doesn't it go away with a toothbrush? The reason why is because that's a biofilm between fungus and bacteria that have made this rock hard fortress that you can't get to without scraping it off. So there's no uh, bowel dentist to scrape off plaque and biofilms from your bowels, and luckily there's no teeth in your bowels for the, the biofilms to really stick to. So biofilms are not as difficult to eradicate from your bowels as they are from your teeth. There's a specific combination of um, herbs and supplements that I like to use called biocidin, and this has been a research product that shows it kills biofilms. So biofilms can harbor both bad bacteria and tons of yeast, so that's another reason why Diflucan and Nystatin, the prescription stuff, doesn't always work to kill off the fungus. So I like to use biocidin in a gentle way to start killing off some of those biofilms, but at the same time, it's so important to focus on re-inoculating or adding new good bacteria back in with probiotics, um, whether that be orally or um, by enema, which I haven't done a video on. We'll be talking about probiotic enemas in the near future. And, um, and then, of course, the prebiotic. Really, even if you can't take a probiotic, the prebiotic is so much more um, important than the probiotic. The probiotic is just live bacteria that you take in a capsule, powder, or food form. Those are live bacteria. The prebiotic is the bacterial food. So it's kind of like a fish tank. You can put as much fish in there as you want, but if you're not feeding the fish, they're all gonna die. Um, but if you have just one fish and start feeding it, typically you can create more fish. I guess that's technically gonna take two fish, but whatever, that might metaphor broke down a little bit. So anyway, make sure you're eating enough prebiotic or enough fiber in order to regrow as much of that good bacteria as you can. Bad bacteria don't really like fiber, so the more good fiber you eat, the more good probiotics you grow, and the more good probiotics you have, the more it kills off the yeast and bad bacteria for you. So use bacterial warfare uh, to your favor. Uh, once again, make sure you limit the carbs, because if you're not limiting the carbs and sugar, then you're not gonna make any progress. Um, one last little tidbit is gonna be that diet soda, despite it being calorie free and not carbs, it has been shown um, kind of anecdotally to actually build yeast populations. Populations. I don't really understand why and I don't think anyone can really prove why scientifically yet but definitely the artificial sweeteners can uh, cause yeast overgrowth and yeast buildup. So I hope this is helpful. Once again, my name is Dr. Philip Oob and I'm a functional medicine doctor in Austin and I hope this video was helpful. Please share it with someone that you know that may be struggling with yeast overgrowth or uh, yeast problems or fatigue, brain fog, any of those symptoms. Yeast overgrowth can really cause a myriad of symptoms. So feel free to leave any comments, ask any questions on this video, and um, I hope this helps.